podcast today we're going to talk about the death of the STEMI bowler and I'm going to have a few select categories talking about the death of the STEMI bowler and how the STEMI ballers set the economy up for a cataclysmic collapse. So where we're going to start with this sad, sad tale. We're going to go back two years ago and we're going to go back to the CARES Act. And I want to explain to you what happened. In your mind, if you could see a rubber band and you could see a rubber band being stretched and really, really stretched, that's what happened to the economy. And there was a few caveats here that really made this pernicious. Number one, the government gave the American public in the form of enhanced unemployment, direct stimulus checks, PPP loans, and EDIL loans, and we're gonna talk about those in a minute, trillions and trillions of dollars, okay? Now, I'm in the process of selling off my rental car fleet, and I've noticed something really interesting. People who are spending their own cash, cash that they earned, are really judicious and careful and they will scrutinize. I had a guy who came and looked at the car three times because he was spending his own cash. See, the STEMI ballers were operating on a fundamentally flawed situation. I have this expression that I've loved to say, luxuries once tasted become necessities. And these STEMI ballers who were getting this enhanced unemployment, direct stimulus checks, PPP, and EDL loans got trillions and trillions of dollars they didn't have to work for. So unlike the careful people who are spending their own cash, the STEMI ballers spent money like it was crack. The STEMI ballers stimulated the economy. Now let's get into the enhanced PPP and EDL loan fraud. You had, because there were no safeguards, there was no checks, once people realized that they were able to get all of this money with some simple paperwork that no one checked, these folks went crazy. It's estimated that the CARES Act fraud to be at 500 billion. So what do these people do? Did they invest the money in the stock market? Some people did. Did they buy cryptos? Some people did. But the vast majority of people spent that money in the economy, including the PP. You know what they did with the PPP uh, proceeds? They bought Lamborghinis, they bought Ferraris, they bought houses, they bought land, they bought Rolexes. All of these purchases that were made with the PPP funds that were fraudulently obtained, the person who sold the Rolex, the, fr the government didn't go, hey, we want, no, they got to keep that money. So what we had for almost two years is a seriously enhanced economy. Now, I want you to imagine the rubber band. And you know, if you take a rubber band and you stretch it and you stretch it and you stretch it, right? What happens when that rubber band, the tension is taken off the rubber band? It actually, if you can have a high speed camera, you can see this. It actually contracts to a size smaller than it started out. And this is what's going on with our economy. In my video talking about the two companies, Walmart and Target, that were jump-starting the recession, it wasn't just Walmart, it wasn't just Target, it was Costco, it was Dollar General, it was everybody. Because in this enhanced, stimulated economy, we were living in a phantom economy. It wasn't real. And because these people had to do absolutely nothing to get this money, they spent it like it was crack, 
like it was burning a hole in their pockets. They had to spend that money. See, we're about to have a little conversation here. And this is something one of my mentors told me. He said, it is best for you to earn 10 million than for you to win 10 million. And I was like, when we were having a conversation one day and I was like, why is that? He said, if you spend years earning 10 million, you're gonna be more careful, you're gonna be more cautious when it comes to spending that money. If someone just, like you won the lottery and someone just said, bam, here's 10 million, you will spend that money like it was nothing because you didn't have to do anything to get it. See, that's one of the issues that we had with the CARES Act. I believe the CARES Act was fundamentally flawed. Everyone was panicking. The folks, they like, we have to do something and they rushed this thing out. And it set the stage for what we have. Because see, the death of the STEMI baller, there are no more STEMI ballers. There's no more stimulus money. So now we have the naked real economy. Now, before we got here, before the pandemic and before 2020, I was doing several videos talking about how weak the American economy was. I was like, do not be hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray by these low unemployment numbers. Why, why do I say that? These low unemployment numbers are mostly for BS jobs that a person can have this job and not be able to pay their rent. This is the majority of these so-called good jobs. So America wasn't really producing high quality jobs. Now we're gonna talk about what, what happened with that after we had this discussion with the PPP fraud. I remember I was, uh, I changed banks, I was with my banker and she said, we have all of these people, white people, coming in, open up business bank accounts. Because once the word got out on the street that you can get this PPP money and you didn't even have to have real business and they were sending you real checks, real dollars, real cash, floodgates were open. Now, all of that money has been removed. The enhanced unemployment. Oh, wait, it's more, it's more to it. Remember, you didn't have to pay your student loans. You didn't have to pay your mortgage. You didn't have to pay your car payment. You didn't have to pay your credit cards. Everybody was working with everybody. So they were getting all this stimulant money and their adult responsibilities dissipated. What, well, what we're going to do, and then we're going to put this in the CARES Act, is, uh, yeah, yeah, you don't have to pay your mortgage. We'll put you in something called forbearance. See, a lot of people in lead read the fine print on the forbearance. I have a friend who's a real estate investor, and she did not get into forbearance because once you're in the forbearance, you can't go out and get another piece of real estate because you're in forbearance. So she said this was going to curtail a lot of my real estate activity. So she didn't, she didn't go for the forbearance. She just rolled it out and she just completely emptied out her emergency fund to pay her mortgages on her rental properties because due to the forbearance and due to, oh yeah, you couldn't evict people for not paying rent. She had 15 properties and like five of her properties. These folks weren't paying rent and she's like drive by. They were going to work, but they were on that STEMI money high. I don't have to pay rent. I don't have to pay my car note. The repo man ain't repoing. The eviction man ain't evicting. The foreclosure man ain't coming. And this went on for months. Now, these were the STEMI ballers. Some of these people got more money from the stimulus than they ever made in their life from the effort and the work of their abilities. Some of these stimulus people went crazy. And this didn't, like I said, this didn't happen for a week or two. This went on for months. In some cases, this went on for two years for some people. And this set the economy up for the crash. Remember that rubber band I was talking about? And now all the tension is off the rubber band and it has shrunk less than it originally started off. That's where we are. And this is setting the stage 
for a lot of nasty consequences. There is an investor, Michael Blurry, who is shorting the economy. This man, I believe, I don't know if he was the guy who did the big short, I'm not 100% I'm not sure on that, but this guy's made some pretty bold predictions that have come true. And what he's predicting, because right now, if you go to the YouTube finance sector, everyone is telling you to buy the dip. There's this great wealth transfer going on. Michael Blurry has a different thing. He says the stock market is going to keep dropping. So some people are going to buy on the dip. Correction, some people bought on the dip and it dipped more. And every financial YouTuber is regurgitating what the next financial YouTuber. Buy on the dip, keep buying, keep putting money in the stock market. Dave Ramsey, like the stock market's only come down 7%. And not in the case of Tesla. At the beginning of the year, Tesla was trading for like $1,200. Now it's like at 600. Tesla has lost 50% of its value. That's not happy, positive news. And I think Elon Musk did the rug pull of all rug pulls. When that stock got to 1200, Elon Musk sold $20 billion worth of Tesla stock. I think his tax bill is something like 10 billion. Elon took a lot of money off the table when the, when the, when the, the chickens were ripe for plucking. I think Elon Musk did the biggest rug pull ever because if you didn't know Tesla was in trouble before the pandemic Tesla almost went bankrupt before the pandemic but once again in the finance sector everyone is regurgitating what returned like Bitcoin Bitcoin has lost 50% of its value that's a crash Michael Burry and some other smart people feel that it's going to go lower there's a guy who took a lot of heat and he said uh, Bitcoin's cr price was going to be 20,000. And when it went to 24, that's when people started interviewing him. See, I feel, and this is not financial advice, because you're going to do what you want to do regardless of what I say. I feel that in this um, situation that we currently are in, buying on the, buying the dip can be one of the worst things that you will ever do because I believe this is the beginning of a pronounced long-term depression of stock in crypto. Why, why did I say that? First of all, Bitcoin was supposed to be immune to the gyrations of the stock market. Bitcoin is closely correlating with the stock market, something it shouldn't be doing. As all crypto, as Bitcoin goes down, Pretty much most cryptos go down. I don't really study crypto, so I don't know if there's any cryptos that are up. But I do know that all of the major cryptos, Bitcoin, Ethereum, um, stable, I don't know if it's stable coins down, but the big guys, all of the big name cryptos are down. There was this guy who owns this exchange, Sam Bankman Freed, I believe. He lost half of his fortune. He was worth 22 billion, now he's worth 10. And if the tea leaves are reading correctly, this is just the beginning. This is just the beginning. Now, what's funny about this is with the death of the STEMI baller, there is no one to replace the STEMI baller. There's no one to pump, because what you saw, was the transfer of trillions of dollars to retailers, to restaurants, to car dealerships, to mortgages, people buying houses. And that left the, that set the economy, because if you go back to my Walmart Target video, how this enhanced in um, artificial demand, well, it wasn't artificial, it was real demand in real time, but it was a temporary spike. It wasn't a long-term, set of anticipation of demand, it tripped the Walmart and Target algorithms where they ordered way more stuff than they need. So you think Walmart, Costco did the same thing, Walgreens did the same thing, 
everybody that got a lot of this stimulus money did the same thing. Same thing. So with the death of the Stimby Baller and what I believe was an ill-conceived plan. Now, I believe if Congress had did something and not to the extent, because I believe it was too generous because one of the things, you cannot just give people money for doing absolutely nothing. I'll tell you a story of a friend. I got a friend who was married and his wife died of cancer and he was crushed. He was really, really crushed. And then when he's tried to date, and this is an older guy, he's in his fifties and I think he and his wife was married 20 years before she died. So he started dipping his toe in the sugar baby waters. And he's a very nice guy. And he was talking about, there was this girl that he was talking to that he messaged and um, she needed 2,500 bucks. And I was like, my dude, do not tell me that you sent $2,500 to this woman. He said, well, she, she, she just seemed to be in sole need. So let me get this straight, my dude. You sent $2,500 to a woman you never met. She's done nothing for you. And he's like, yeah, he's a generous guy. And then a few weeks later, she needed $5,000. And he didn't send that. Then he's like, man, every day she's asking for money. I like, you think? Dude, what you did, I'm gonna give you an analogy, my dude. What you did is you put a, a, a bowl of milk on your back doorstep and a little kitty cat came and lapped up that milk. And then you woke up the next day to meow, meow, meow. Cause the kitty cat was expecting more milk. And he said, this woman pestered him for money for literally two years, two years. This is why you can't give people money for doing nothing. Cause they gonna come back. She came back over and over and over again. And this was, um, actually, this is kind of how I got the idea to start doing research on sugar babies. Um, and I was like, dude, you cannot give these women money and they don't do nothing for you. You set the stage and what the STEMI, what the United States government did is set the stage for the STEMI baller. These people got used to this money. They got addicted to this money. So this set the stage for the bigger collapse because the economy got hit with those trillions of dollars, like boom, 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 boom. Like Mike Tyson doing body blows, boom, 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 right? And then the money was gone. And the economy is reeling. The stock market is reeling. Crypto is reeling. Once again, let's see how this video aged, because a lot of you love to leave those little comments. I am predicting in the coming months, the stock market is going to drop even more. And crypto is going to drop even more. Now, why do I say this? I was watching the video and the guy put out a very interesting stat that I had to research that literally 67% of the listed companies on Wall Street don't make any money. Let me say this again. Your door dashes, they don't make any money. I think Uber made some money. So what you're seeing is a lot of companies listed on the stock exchange are not generating a profit. How long can you run that shell game before one day it's like musical chairs? and play the song and people walk around and then the chairs disappear. 67% of the companies listed on the stock market exchange are not making any money. 
And this is mostly tech companies, to be factual. So you have an economy that had artificially enhanced demand that was rug pulled out of it. And you have a bunch of companies listed on the New York Stock Exchange and S&P 500. They ain't making no money. Walmart's making money. Target's making money. But a lot of these companies are treading water. It's only a matter of time before the chickens come home to roost. And I believe that time is coming very soon. And I'm going to tell you. And once again, you grow, you do what you want. I feel that buying the dip is going to lose you money. I would wait two years. If I was in this, if I was a stock market investor, I would wait two years to see what the market would do. That's just me. Because if you go ahead and dollar cost, let's say a thousand bucks and you spend $12,000 into the stock market over the course of a year and over the course of the year, the stock market drops 80%. You've lost $8,000, which you could potentially get back once the market corrects, you could get it back. But I feel buying on the dip, cause see, one of the things, and I watch a lot of YouTube, um, many people forget that the Great Depression happened and the stock market was depressed for 10 years. That's like, I keep hearing this thing. The stock market has had an average return of something, some for the last hundred years. And I'm just sitting there going, it's only 2022. I, I got to fact check that and research that, but we're in a position with all of the elements and things that I put out like Tesla, Tesla was going to go bankrupt. But once again, we have a version of, uh, it's not the hunger games. It's, um, it's not a Ponzi scheme. It is artificial manipulation of the stock market. And give you an example. The fundamentals of game stock are horrible, but this stock got pushed up because of manipulation of the hedge funds and retail investors. So if you know what you're doing, the stock market is a game that you can play and you can make a lot of money if you know what you're doing. But the average person doesn't know what they're doing. The average person just got in the stock market because the guy next to him at the gas station was talking about, yeah, man, I made like, you know, 50,000 on Tesla. Word? And you're on your phone, like, ooh, buying some Tesla stocks. See, it's he said, she said, whisper campaigns. When the internet first started, there was something that was called whisper rooms where people would just go in and put some information on the internet to boost up a stock market. It was, it was, it was quite the early version of a pump and dump. Get all people excited and gassed up, right? Well, one of the things that um, people don't understand is when you're investing in stock as a retail investor, you're playing against the house and the house usually wins for a reason. So I feel that we're on the beginning stages of a prolonged depression of the stock market. I know that's bold talk. I know that's crazy talk because every YouTuber in the finance is buy the dip, buy the dip, buy the dip, invest your money in stocks. Let's talk about that. I did a, some research that 81% of the people in America make less than $35,000 a year. What does that mean in terms of investment? Any money that these people in that 81% invest, they can't afford to lose it. Like, you know, all your favorite YouTubers who make 
anywhere from 25,000 to 300,000 per month. And they're like, hey, I just bought, there was a guy, I just found him, Jordan Welch. He just spent $100,000 in the stock market. He bought one Bitcoin. This dude makes 25,000 a month from YouTube. So let's say all his investments go south. He makes $300,000 a year from YouTube. He will be okay. Can you afford to lose a dime? And oh, I had a comment, and th this is a fantasy. There's so many people who feel that there are folks who are extremely rich that look like, they look like you and speak like you and act like you. They got all this money, but they don't use it. Like one fool put this on my channel and I actually told him he was a fool, believed that my friend who's living in his car with health issues has millions of dollars somewhere and he's just doing that. Let me tell you something about getting old. I'm 55 and comfort is a supreme thing when you get old. This is why um, I could not do van life. I could live in a nice RV or I could live on a boat. I could not live in a van, couldn't do it because it's uncomfortable for me. And what I've seen is a lot of people get in van life and they'll do it for two, three years, except for Bob Wells of cheap RV living. He's 66, he, he loves that stuff, but he's upgraded. He has a bigger van, old person, more comfort. So I'm gonna tell you, there ain't nobody 80 years old with millions of dollars living in their car because they are that cheap with health issues. Uh, he had health issues when we were talking, so I know they're worse. There ain't no way in hell he said no. Oh, and also, once again, to the conversation, and this is one of the things, and this is something my girlfriend and I talk about, reading comprehension skills. This guy was against making money. He was against money, but once again, some internet keyboard warrior, some Yahoo, Yahoo! Well, yeah, he probably got more money than you and everybody else. Keep believing those fantasies, and you're gonna be an old person eating now, pull out of a can. The man wasn't about money. He used to argue with me. And I was just sitting there like, I think some people just comment because they're bored. But he did not pay attention to the video because if he had, he never would have made that comment. This dude don't have no money. That was the whole point. That's why we stopped talking because he was like, you just the money grubbing. You all about the money. Because he wasn't about that money. But once again, you have these weak, moist little men who want to come on the YouTube channel and comment. Oh, because... Uh, for some reason, th this is funny, this is another comment. I have violence looming in my future. You know, last time I was in the fight, I was in the military, basic training. I got in the fight in basic training. That was the last time that I was in an actual fight. That was 1985. Violence typically doesn't come my way because I'm not a violent person and I don't hang around violent people. But it, it's just kind of funny. But yeah, man, <clears throat> the STEMI baller, the CARES Act, set the stage for the great collapse. Now, there is a wealth transfer. There is indeed a wealth transfer. And you know what the wealth transfer is? You saw it doing the great Stimmy Baller moves. There were some people who saved that money. There were some people who invested it, but that was a small fraction. The majority of them spent that money like it was going out of style. Big Meech, they spent that money. They spent that money. And that's the wealth transfer. And like, you know, I'm about to go piss off some people and this is some one of my friends said he he passed many years ago. I used to get when I had hair, I used to get a haircut. He was my barber. He was like 70 at the time, so he he's been gone for a minute. But he said, everyone talking about reparations. 
He said, if you give these Negroes reparation, that money will be back in the hands of the people it came from within two months. And I, I feel he's right. That, that's the wealth transfer. The wealth transfer is the poor average person trying to be a STEMI baller. These people who got these fraudulent PPP loans, what do they buy? Lambos, houses, jewelry. Because, you know, there, there's this thing called the thirst. And what the thirst is, is when you're living a substandard life, you have this thirst for a greater life. And when you're on that thirst, whoo, you will, you will kill your mama. When you got that thirst, you will sell your child into sexual slavery if you got that thirst. That thirst is an addiction. It's a mental addiction. And a lot of these people had that thirst. Uh, there was a show, Ozark, on Netflix. I talked about this before. Uh, the game character launders money for a Mexican cartel. And one of his partners, he was stacking cash in the wall and she found some of his cash. She took the cash, she left out of town. Did she do anything productive? No, she was doing drugs and got arrested while driving high and under the influence after she wrecked her car. That is the case of the average person. They get a bunch of money, they're gonna do something like that. Not everyone, but the average person is gonna do like that because they don't have any financial literacy. I am shocked at the number of people who don't have a proper banking account. I shouldn't be, but I am shocked at the number of people who use a debit card, even though the debit, now this is something I learned in the car rental business because I don't use the debit card, but I have found out that you have a feature where you can turn the debit card off where if someone has your number, they can't get your money. So, but once again, use a credit card credit card, something goes down funky, boom, you may hold instantly. Debit cards, mm, it's a crapshoot, it's a crapshoot. But the STEMI baller and the, you know, and the, the cahoots of Congress, because see, it wasn't just, it, it, was, it was a joint effort. The CARES Act, the STEMI baller set us up for this national collapse. Now, once again, Canada had a situation where Canada took some very astute, and stern measures and they just stopped spending money. And it was hard, it was brutal, but now their balance sheet got better. That's something that we should do, but we don't have politicians with the courage to do it because if we had a group of politicians that got together and said, look, we're gonna do what we need to do to get America straight, okay? And we all know that we do this, we're gonna be voted out of office next term, but we're gonna do it for the American people. We need people who wanna lead and be leaders and courageous. Because um, the STEMI baller, the lack of long-term vision and planning is killing this country. And like I said, you can do what you want. You can buy your crypto, you can buy your Bitcoin, you can do what you want. But I'm here to tell you, I believe we're at the beginning stages of a long-term pronounced downturn where if you buy on the dip, it's going to dip again. And you keep buying on the dip, it's going to be like you just went outside and you have a bucket with fire in it and you're just dumping your cash in that bucket. And there will be news reports and stuff about this and people will be talking about this. And this is funny. Even with all this, housing prices are not going to crash. Mm -mm. And rent's not going to go down. That's one of the nasty consequences of this because housing prices will correct, but they're not gonna crash like they did in 2008. And now housing prices literally crashed. I, I was dating this girl who had a mortgage on her house and her house was like, she bought her house for 350 and the bank was saying that was worth 175. That ain't gonna happen. I can see a correction of 20, 30%, but it's not going to crash where you can get yourself a $500,000 crib for 50,000. That ain't happening. That ain't happening. Now, what is going to happen is Airbnb real estate investors are about to get crushed because I've been watching 
A lot of people doing Airbnb, they ain't making the money that they, they thought they were gonna make. And it was really, really interesting. But yeah, the STEMI baller, the STEMI, the STEMI baller in Congress set us up for this fail. And the great wealth transfer is on. The transfer of wealth from the poor people to the folks who are already rich. That's on. That's happening right now. That's happening right now. And if you want to be part of the great wealth transfer where the money flows to you, you're going to have to do a few things. Number one, stop living above your means. Number two, actually have some cash in the bank. Number three, get out of debt. Number four, start a business. I know that's real hard for some people to comprehend, but once again, those are the people, those are the people who are going to win. Like right now I was watching a video about trucking. And like I said, in the coming weeks, trucking is about to be really hard for folks who are very leveraged. For the folks who have paid off trucks, good balance sheet, cash on hand, they will be able to weather the storm. But the average trucker, mm -mm, mm -mm. it's going to be painful, man. There's literally going to be blood in the streets. And if you got some money, and let's, let's talk about money. I'm going to give you some numbers. I'm not talking about you got to have a million dollars. I am talking right now that people who have $10,000 to $50,000 cash will be able to participate in the wealth transfer. I'm not talking about you got to be rich. You just got to have some cash money, some cash, and be diligent and know where to deploy your cash to participate in this wealth transfer. Or you can be out there spending every dime or believing that Joe Biden is gonna cancel your student loans. How that working now? How that look right now? Joe Biden's canceling my student loans. I remember person after person called Dave Rams. It's like, hey, you know, we got the money to pay off the student loans, but you know, Biden's gonna, it never happened. See, there's this channel and I'm not gonna mention it. Well, you may know who it is, but I hate this guy's voice. It's a very weak, wimpy man voice. Very weak. And what he does is he asks these people to do these simple things. And most people say no. And whenever the person does, he gives them like $500. And that, that's the whole, what his channel is based on, giving people who will help him out money. And I look at the number of people who are waiting on Jesus Christ to come back and save them it's absolutely crazy because these folks are going crazy. I mean, how bad does your life have to be where $500 will change your life? Because he, he deals with a certain demographic. He ain't walking the streets of Sandy Springs doing this. He's in the hood. He's dealing with the lower social economic class. That's why he, he chooses his targets wisely. Homeless people, People in Walmart, yeah. I, I, I hate watching it because his voice is just so weak and feminine and it's just ugh. So let me know your thoughts and opinions and I will see you guys in the next one.